Hello everybody, Annette Ornelas here from Southwind Designs and this is another episode of Quilt Snacks. So I wanted to welcome you to my studio today to show you some little pinwheels and start a little bit of a challenge. So welcome everybody. I'm just going to wait just a little bit to see who else jumps on but I wanted to wish you all a happy new year and um, hopefully this year will get better and better and uh, as quilters you know what we do is to make things so I thought this would be a great little uh, project for you guys and a little bit of a challenge so what I have here are little pinwheels and if you've uh, watched my Facebook or Instagram you've seen that I've posted these little pinwheels as part of a Instagram kind of an Instagram hop that I did for Kate Colloran whose fabric line this is and this is the Tiki Punch fabric so I made a, a table runner for her and so I had a great time with the little scraps that were left over so welcome everybody it's so nice to see you guys I've kind of missed my quilt snacks I had to take a little break we took the RV and we went um, you know and kind of went away for a little while to just kind of regroup and recharge so to speak but I came back full of ideas so here is just one of them and so this is a little pinwheel and I'm calling these pinwheel pops and you'll be happy to know I already wrote the instructions it's just a two-page little thing and I'm gonna make sure that you guys can get them um, the instructions are for this size right now and it turns out it'll be a five inch finished pinwheel so what can you do with a five inch five inch finish put a little frame around it let me pull this off my design wall put a little frame around it you could do a mud mat everything else happy new year everybody i can see some names pop up so <laughs> yep so this is about the size for uh just a little mud mat but i wanted to show you how these things happen so I've told you guys before that I uh, not just collect fabric, but I have trouble throwing things away. So here are some of my fabrics, and these are three and a half inch squares. So this is kind of fun, and uh, I have a whole bunch of them. And you can see how full this little tray is. So I thought I need to come up with things to use all these little squares that, of course, I have already cut. So let me show you how it works. It is really cool. So the, the half square triangles that you might even have left over from another project can also be used here. So how do you make a half square triangle? Everybody, of course, can use their favorite method. I'm just going to show one quick little way that I use that allows you to use your scraps that you may have already cut. There's other ways that probably are just as good, but for the scraps, this works really well. So I have two fabrics. And I mark the wrong side diagonally on the lighter fabric, which for me is the background right now, whatever I can see. And then I'm going to stitch on either side. And unfortunately, I've already cut that apart, but I'm going to stitch on either side of that line and then cut on the line. And then I have something that looks like this, a half square triangle. And let me show you the back. I press the back seam open because I have something else that is folded that goes on top of that. So I want to have it as flat as possible. Now you see those dog ears here. They're going to be cut off because at this point I'm starting with a three and a half inch square, which I have lots of. And then by the time this comes along, this is just a little bit larger than a three inch. I don't really work with seven eighths or anything like that. I just go with the full or half inch and then I trim it back to what I need. So this is what comes out of it. And this is what it looks like after you have cut and cut those dog ears off. So let me grab my little ruler here. I have these little rulers that I use and I have rulers that have a center diagonal seam or not a seam, of course, a line that I place on the seam. And that's how you can real easily cut on two sides. Then you would turn it over and just cut on the other two sides. And that's how you can quickly square up those little half square triangles. Okay, so let me put that back in row wherever that was. Oh, here. Okay, so the next step is you're gonna use your glue stick and whoops, 
you are going to have a folded piece that starts out as a square in case you're not familiar with my technique you fold it in half and it makes a triangle this is the fold underneath and then you are going to stick it with a glue stick to the half square triangle underneath pretty cool very easy so four pieces I mean four of those pieces are needed for pinwheel and you have the half square, tri half square triangle and the folded triangle right over the top. So let me show you what that looks like. I've done a little prep work. If you wanted to kind of sort out your scraps and you could put your half square triangle in a little box, that's the easiest way to do it. And then you place your other pieces on top of it like a pinwheel. So you have to make sure that you're perpendicular to your seam line. I hope you can see that. Let me see. Oh, yeah, I can do that. Yay. And then I'm going to take the other piece and just so it makes a diagonal line here. And then this piece goes here. Of course, my pin is in the wrong spot. No problem. And then this piece right here would go on top and you can see how this little pinwheel happens. So you can lay down your pieces underneath first and then glue the pinwheel pieces on or you can do them all and play around with them. And you can see I've used colors that are uh, a little bit analogous, you know, the orange and the orange red. So this would be a really fun pinwheel to do. And then you could kind of go around with your colors, what you have a blue on blue or a green on green, or you could go wild. Like I really love to love this fabric combination. It's a green, but the underneath fabric here is a green print with something else. So it's just, there's endless possibilities. So it can be very scrappy or it can be very coordinated. And most of the time when I cut scraps, I don't have one of something. I usually cut the rest of fabric and I have fours at least or 16. So there's always room to make something fun. Let me zoom this back out so you can see. So I wanted to show you the difference here. This is very, it's a very similar uh, red underneath. And I made my little box just like before. Let me see if you can see it better now. No, you can't. Let's see if I can go right over top of it. So I made this little box and once I have my little box, then I'll put something on top. Now, maybe the pink isn't necessarily the one, but I wanted to show you something and I need a different fabric. So what happens if you put this on the other side? So if you put this on the other side, guess what happens? Your pinwheel will run in the other direction. Can you see that? So there's endless possibilities. I'm hoping that you have scraps. Can you see this pinwheel goes this way and this goes this way? So it's all up to you. Sometimes when you put them together, you might want to choose pinwheels that run all in the same direction because it's going to be looking a little more, um, you know, pleasing to the eye if you, if you want to run them all in the same direction. So what can you do with these pinwheels? Well, you could set them side by side and have an alternate block. And that could just be a plain, a plain block, which of course, you know, just like that, you know, kind of white around it or something to kind of show it off. Or you could put a pinwheel on point, let me show you this and with an alternate plain block and it'll look completely different now you see those pinwheels right here these loose pieces i haven't done anything with them for small pieces like that i will put the quilt together before i start top stitching but on this little mug mat i did the top stitching to show you uh, what that looks like so these fabrics are very different so you can see it very well and i just peel it back i start stitching on one side through the center on the other side stitch in place, turn, and I do the same thing. So I'm hoping that you guys like that and maybe use that to make something and share it in the group or on my Facebook page. But um, there's two ways. There are the right spinners, there's the left spinners. And then I've made this little um, mini and I wanted to show you, this is a side-by-side -side setting with an alternate plane. It has a border that has a little bit of a border block but I haven't even peeled that back because you can see those pieces are very small and I have to decide if I want to do it by hand or by machine, which, yeah, I might have to do that one by hand. 
just to have a little something to do in the evening because I don't have any bindings right now. So what do you think? Are you in? Are you going to do the challenge and do some pinwheels? I'm going to put this somehow on the inspiration page. And if I tie it into a newsletter sign up, if you're already signed up, don't even worry. If you put your name in there twice, you're only going to get one. And uh, some people have trouble getting their newsletters in the first place. But I just want you to be able to get this uh, little pattern and you can use it for personal use. Not a problem. So I have some other things to show you, which some of you might have already seen my painted elephants. Let me see if I can zoom out. I'm zoomed out. So I'm in the last editing phase. And so this is the green one. And then I have the blue one, and I honestly do not know which one should go on the cover. I was hoping that you guys could help me. I know I might have asked that in a post before, but I just really don't know. Maybe I should put both on the cover. I posted both of them in one picture before, so that's in the last edit, and I might put it up for a pre-sale probably as early as next week. So... Those are all the new things that I have to show you. I have some other new things that I'm working on, but you know, I have to get further down. We just got back. So you think both, Cheryl? Yeah, I'm thinking both almost because they're so very different. And the last time I ran this on the f inspiration page to see what people would like, it was kind of split down the middle. Half of them like the green background. Many of you like the blue background. So, you know, Maybe I'll do a double cover to where, you know, people can choose which cover they want. I've done that for the As You Wish. I have a dark and a light background on that. And if you have that pattern and you notice that you pull out the front covers, you can actually turn it over and get the other side. So I think that is all for today, unless you guys have some questions. Yes, they do complement each other. Yes. Thank you so much for your comments. That helps me so much. So I hope you enjoyed your first quilt snack of the year. There'll be more, uh, hopefully, at least two or three a month. Sometimes in a month, I'm going to be busy doing some things, and I will put something as more of a post as opposed to a Facebook Live. So I hope you're having a great rest of the week. Enjoy the pinwheels, and probably by tomorrow, you can get that little pattern right there off the inspiration page. And let me know how you like it. Have a great day. Bye.